hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well guys in this video we will be seeing cognizant gen c latest interview experience of a candidate in this video i have covered all the questions related to your technical and hr as well as behavioral questions also and not just questions i will also be telling you the answers for all the questions okay so that you get to know how you can prepare for your upcoming gen c interview in this video basically uh, the questions and the focus is majorly on oops and whatever the introduction that the candidate gave so once you watch this experience you will get to know everything and this uh, experience is covering most asked short short questions that you can also get in your interview so make sure to watch the video till complete end and if you are finding it helpful please let me know in the comment section by writing the word helpful with that i get to know how many of you are preparing for your gen c interviews and i will post more videos related to that guys before we start the video if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel as i regularly post these kinds of helpful videos on my channel okay also there is a complete playlist on my channel related to cognizant prep make sure to check this playlist you will find a lot of interview experience related to your gen c in this playlist okay and guys uh, usually you guys ask me that which exact role is this interview experience for uh, interview experience is for so basically uh, you know uh, you should not focus on preparing for your interviews by seeing the role because sometimes we have seen that the interviews of Gen C is far easier than Gen C, like sorry Gen C next is far easier than Gen C and sometimes it is the other way around so your focus should never be uh, preparing for interview by seeing the role instead you should be focused on the questions asked okay because it totally depends on interviewer to interviewer what types of questions they ask okay so without wasting any time let's get started with our first question let's look at this question the question is tell me about yourself so basically usually the first question that you will be asked in your interview is tell me about yourself or introduce yourself okay anything basically you always have to like you know pre-prepare your introduction okay never rely on that you will go to your interview and just give your introduction on the go because in that case you will stammer a lot and you will be confused what to speak and you might over speak usually your introduction should be 40 to 50 seconds long or at max 60 seconds it should not be more than that okay let's see one simple answer that we have here hello my name is and then you have to tell your name i recently completed my for example if you have done btech then so you can see uh, i have recently completed my btech from so and so university i have a strong background in programming especially in java sql and web technologies like html css and javascript during my academic journey i have worked on projects involving database management system and full stack web development Apart from technical skills, I enjoy problem solving and continuous learning. I'm excited about this opportunity at Cognizant because I believe it uh, it will allow to enhance my skills and contribute meaningfully to projects. Basically, a uh, few things that you should include in your introduction is details about your project, your skill set, okay, your educational qualification from where you have, if you want, you can say from where you have done your education and if you have good CGPA to showcase, you can showcase that too. At least these details should be there so that you will set the tone for your interview. Basically, whatever the skill sets or details about the project that you will be saying in your introduction, based on that only you will be getting questions further in your interview going ahead. Moving forward to the next question that we have, difference between delete and truncate in SQL. Okay, so see the answer for this will be delete removes basically the specific rows with a where condition and logs the operation, while truncate removes all the rows without logging and is faster. Okay, I hope you have understood the difference between delete and truncate. Moving on now to the next question. The next question is the HR based question. Okay, usually these types of questions will be asked. The key is you always have to be confident while answering. Okay, and keep a smiling face. Okay, uh, while answering. You should not look nervous. Okay, because sometimes you know uh, in, in HR based questions, they don't even focus on your answer. They are actually focusing on your body language. So the better confidence you have the better answer you can give okay let's see the answer for this question cognizant is a globally recognized it company known for its innovation and employee friendly work culture i admire how cognizant focuses on digital transformation and cutting edge technologies the company offers great learning opportunities structured career growth and exposure to dive projects diverse projects i believe working on working at cognizant helped me uh, develop my technically and professionally and i am eager to contribute to the impactful projects here because basically in this my aim of giving you these answers is that i will be providing you some content now it does not matter that you also have to speak the exact same answers based on this you have to pick up some points and you have to answer in your own language never trying to you know by heart the answers in an interview because that might sound very uh, you know not uh, natural okay you have to be natural you have to speak in your own language in your own words it's just that you sh you should not be sh short of like you know words or content that is why the aim of the the aim of giving answers is that you should not be short of content and 
the main the main aim of these videos is what types of questions you will get in your interview okay let's see the next question what is normalization in databases so see normalization organizes data to remove redundancy and improve integrity forms include 1nf 2nf 3nf 1nf is like atomic data 2nf is removing partial it uh, partial dependency 3mnf removes uh, transitive dependency we also have bcnf which is boys for normal form i hope you are well aware about the different types of normalizations it is a very important interview question that you can get in your gen c examination or interview moving on to the next question explain the concept of oops and its principle this is one of the most asked questions okay so you should prepare this question well you, you don't have to over speak I, as i said for these types of questions you, you should always speak around 30 seconds if you have a lot to speak then 40 seconds is enough but 25 to 30 seconds is more than enough if the interviewer wants you to speak more they will ask you let's see the answer for this question object oriented programming or oops is a paradigm paradigm based on project objects and classes its principle includes principles you can say see these are interchangeable words okay so you should understand that principle or uh, or feature or pillars okay whenever these any of these is asked you have to answer the same thing that is uh, either you can be asked pillars of the oops or features of oops or principles of oops all these means the same okay so what are the different features or principles encapsulation encapsulation is hiding data using access modifiers abstraction is hiding implementation details inheritance is acquiring properties of a parent class and polymorphism is method behaving differently in different contexts method overriding and method overriding moving on to the next question what is the difference between abstract class and interface the answer for this question is an abstract class can have both abstract and concrete methods while interface only has abstract methods before java 8 interface supports multiple inheritance <coughs> we have the next question is explain the difference between stack and queue okay so these kinds of basic data structures question can also be asked not in detail they will not ask you to implement it then and there itself using code but these kinds of orally or some you know conceptual based questions can be asked let's see the answer for this one the stack follows lifo that is last in first out principle and real life example is a browser stack button and queues it follows fifo which is first in first out and example is print queue now guys you can also give a real life example of a stack and queues stack is what stack is a uh, stack of plate right that we keep so what whichever plate is kept on the top you can take that plate only right which means last plate that was in okay that will be first out okay got it right so stack of plates is a real life example of like you know stack now uh, real life example of queue is uh, for example there is a count ticket counter and then people are standing in a queue okay these are peoples they are standing in a queue so which uh, whoever is standing in first that is first in will be first out right so this is like a real life example okay of both you can give them in your interviews moving on to the next question write a program to find the fibonacci series up to n terms okay so i hope everyone is aware what is a fibonacci series basically we have the uh, series starting with 0 and 1 and then how the index series will be print, uh, you know found out will be the sum of last two so which means this will be 1 then 1 plus 1 2 then 1 plus 2 3 2 plus 3 5 so on and so forth let's see the code for this one so these kinds of basic codes uh, can be asked to you okay they might not be focusing on uh, you know you they their focus is not that you should make it run but their focus is on logic that are you able to write the logic for the code or not let's see the code we have fibonacci function here which is taking the n digit okay and until when you have to because see fibonacci series can go up to n numbers right so up till what numbers you want to generate a fibonacci series for example if you give six which means these many uh, like items will be there in your fibonacci series so in this way this is the n okay then we will have three variables a is equals to zero b is equals to one and c okay then what we are doing is we are running over a loop from i is equals to zero to i is less than n and i plus plus we are printing out a value okay so initially our a value was zero okay and then uh, what we will do is see a and a zero and b one why we have taken it because see initial two values i told you right it will always be same and then based on this we will just do a plus b right what is c c is the next next value that will be generated and then what we are doing here we are just changing the values of a and b c what i am saying is 0 1 and then see initially this was a this was b and then c is generated right this is c now once we have the c value what we will do is we will print c value and then after that we will change the pointers of a and b okay but in our code what we are doing is we are just changing it first and then printing it which means this will become a 
and uh, no this sorry this will become a and this will become b and so on and so on like we will just move pointer one by one and so this is the basic implementation of your fibonacci series moving on to the next question what is the difference between html and html5 so basically uh, the candidate said in their introduction that they have knowledge of uh, you know front end technologies so that is why they are getting this question so that's why i'm saying always prepare your introduction well because with that you can set the tone for your interview let's see the answer for this question html5 introduces uh, semantic elements, article section, multimedia support, audio, video and offline storage options and these semantic elements were not there in the previous version of HTML. Moving on to the next question, explain CSS, Flexbox and GED. So see, this question can, like you can answer this in a very detailed manner but I have taken the very simple and small answers for this question but uh, if you are not aware or if you are not having any idea about this answer, I would highly suggest you go over the internet, search for it and prepare one answer for yourself. Okay, let's see the answer for this one. Flexbox is one dimensional layout, row and column uh, for flexible items, whereas grid is two dimensional layout, rows and columns for structured design. Okay. Moving on to the next question, what is the difference between GET and POST methods in HTTP? So GET is used to request data and is visible in the URL. POST sends data securely and is not visible in the URL. Simple answers, uh, which also conveys that you have the knowledge of these topics. Moving on. Write a program to check if a string is a palindrome. Okay, so see here we have this uh, like example code. Now, what is a palindrome? First of all, for example, if we have a word like this, this is called as palindrome because if you read it from this side or if you read it from that side, it will be same. Okay, so basically we have taken a function is palindrome. We are taking the input string and i is equals to zero and j is equals to what uh, up to the string length. For example, a string is of one, two, three, four, five length. So it, uh, we have to iterate basically over every uh, string character, right? So that's why. So what we are doing is while i is less than j, what we will do is we will check if the string at character i is not equals to string at character a, then you have to return false. Otherwise, uh, you just have to simply increment the values. And so i will start from here, j will start from here. And then if it is not equal, then uh, sorry, if it is equal, then you just have to move the values okay the pointers i is i will come here j will come here you will check again if it is equal or not and then at a point both will be at same point right so again it will be equal and then if when i crosses j then you have to come out of the loop okay and once you will break out of the loop you will say true which means the string is a, a palindrome okay and just in case at any point for example in this word uh, if the string is not a palindrome, then in the first case only you will come out of the loop. Uh, that is, this will become not equal and you will just return false, which means uh, no, the string is not a palindrome. I hope you have understood it. Uh, if not, please pause for a minute. Take this code and try to understand it slowly. You will get it. It is a very easy code. Moving on to the next question. What is recursion? Provide an example. A very simple question. So let's see. Recursion is when a function calls itself to solve a problem and the example is factorial. So factorial is one of the easiest example for recursion. Okay. So what is happening here is we are taking a number n and we are checking. This is the base condition. Okay. You can say this is the base condition. Why base condition? Because see, uh, always the factorial of zero is what? One, right? So if we have taken any digit, we what we usually do is we will uh, like, you know, decrement its value, right? So we want that when we reach zero, it should stop and then it should return one as the value instead of zero. Otherwise, if we will keep on multiplying everything and then if we if it returns zero uh, for zero, then all the values will become zero. OK, so this is basically the uh, base condition that is if n is equals to zero, then return one. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to take n and then recursively call this function for factorial of n minus one. For example, if you have to find uh, factorial of five, what you will do five into factorial of four. OK, in the same way for counting factorial of four, what you will do four into factorial of three. Right. And in the same way, this will keep on. This is basically what this is recursion. Right. So in which uh, recursion will follow 2 into fact of 1 and 1 into fact of 0 and as I said when it will be 0 it will be 1 so 1 into 1 it will be 1 and then it will keep on passing the values calculated values and finally you will get the uh, like total factorial of 5 which you will return okay so this is the simplest example of recursion okay next question is what is the time complexity of binary search the answer for this will be order of big O of uh, log n since what binary search does is it divides the search space into half in each step so that is why for example like if you have this array okay and if you want to if you want to search anything in this array what you will do is it will divide it okay it will see for example if you want to search for 2 okay it will see if uh, 2 is in the first half or not 
okay so in this way divides it okay so whatever your search area is it get it's getting reduced in half every time so that is why the uh, time complexity is big o of log n moving on to the next question uh, again one of the hr based questions let's see where do you see yourself in 5 years so the answer for this can be in 5 years i see myself as a skills software engineer with expertise in full stack development and cloud technologies i aim to take leadership roles mentor juniors and contribute to major projects my goal is continuously upskilling obtain relevant certifications and work on innovative solutions that add value to the organization cognizant provides the right environment for professional growth and i look forward for advancing my career here in this organization so guys i am giving you a lot of content based on this you have to pick up some words and some points and you have to speak according to your own language let's see the next question how do you handle stress and tight deadlines the answer for this can be i believe time management and prioritization are key to handling stress when faced with tight deadlines i break tasks into smaller manageable parts and create a plan i stay calm focused and ensure clear communication with my team to avoid last minute surprises additionally i take short breaks to refresh my mind and maintain productivity in my past projects i successfully met deadlines by staying organized and work efficiently under pressure so in this way you can answer your question moving on to the next question do you have any questions for us Uh, so basically this is usually the last question that will be asked to you in your interview so you should never say no okay for this types of question you should always ask one basic question okay and you always have to remember that ask one such question uh, so that because of your question the interviewer is not getting awkward okay they should not feel awkward and they should not be unanswerable okay what you should not ask you should never ask for a feedback okay because even if you ask so it is a strict no to interviewers that you can't give any feedback to the candidates in an interview so even if you ask for a feedback they will only say that okay i am i will i am not able to give you the feedback at the moment but you will receive your feedback soon from the hr so they will only say that so that's why never ask for a feedback what kinds of question you can ask let's see yes i would love to know more about the career growth opportunities at cognizant how does the company support employees in learning new technologies and advancing into their roles you can ask this one question okay or alternatively you can also ask another question like you can ask about the company's work culture team structure or upcoming projects you can ask like you know what kind if i get this job what kind of team i will be working with what kind of technologies i will be working on so on and so forth okay so i hope you have understood what types of questions you can ask when you get this question do you have any questions for us so guys that's all for today's video i hope you found it helpful and if you do please give it a like if you have any more doubts please drop them in the comment section you can also join me on telegram and follow me on instagram as well you can ask your queries over instagram dm2 make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss on any of the important updates on notification whenever i upload a new video that's all for this video thanks for watching the video